Well, this past year has forced many to spend some extra time indoors. So some are deciding to brush up on their culinary skills, but there are some mistakes that you could be making, and they're common ones. So here to help us out is Victoria Sophia from Happily Ever Victoria. Good morning. Good morning. You know, there's so many cooking mistakes that we can av easily avoid, and I'm happy to share a bunch with you today. So that way, whatever you're making in the kitchen, everyone can enjoy it, and you don't have to feel like there was a disaster after making, you know, something that you worked really hard on. <laughs> that makes us feel really good hearing that, because there's nothing worse than, you know, spending that time trying to make a delicious meal and have it not come out as you imagined it. So let's jump in with your first tip. If you are following a recipe, make sure you actually follow it and are prepared. Yeah, so forgetting to read the recipe before starting to cook is the number one easily you know, avoidable mistake when you're cooking in the kitchen. The idea is to check the recipe so that you can find out whatever ingredients you have in your home and find out the ones that you don't have. Because there are times that we'll say, oh, I've made this 10 times already. I'm sure we have everything. And realize during the recipe itself that we're missing five ingredients. And you know, there's a problem with that. Also, I mean, if anyone has ever, you don't have to go to cook cooking school to know this phrase, but if anyone's ever watched a cooking show, you know the term mise en place. It mm -hmm. means everything in its place. This is a great time when you're reading the recipe to see if you really have enough oil, enough rice, enough you know, salt, whatever it is, get them ready so that when you're able to have that in front of you, you you're not going to be able to say, like, I don't have certain things. You also have the ability to read the recipe and not skip steps and to also find, like, if there's a cooking term you don't know, there are possibly a, a lot of cooking terms that we don't know when we're trying to tackle new recipes. So mm -hmm. take that time, read the recipe, find the ingredients that you actually have, and and set it up. So like you said, get prepared, get those mise en place, everything all measured out. Then it's time to cook. And hey, we love a good sizzle, but sometimes you don't achieve that. Why? because you're not letting the pan get hot enough. <laughs> so you, before you add the food, you must let the pan get hot enough because otherwise the food will stick, the meat won't brown. I mean, we all have the need to just come and check on what we're cooking, whether it's a sheet pan item that we're making or a pot or a pan. We want to check and see how it's going. But, you know, things happen where, you know, the food won't be proper if we don't leave it alone after we get the pan hot. So let it get hot so that we can actually get this stuff made and everyone can enjoy it. And don't overcrowd that same pan as well. Yeah, that's the thing. So um, I was talking about sheet pans. We like to do like one pot meals, sheet pan meals a lot of the times. But if yeah. we don't leave enough space for the food, um, you know, the heat isn't distributed evenly. So you want to leave enough room so the food actually isn't touching. This is one thing from your childhood that you can bring as an adult and it actually helps. <laughs> leave room on it, whether it's a pan or a sheet pan, so that the food isn't touching. So it actually cooks evenly and you'll be able to have great tasting food because otherwise you'll have some bits of your food not cooked properly and others will be overcooked. And you won't know that unless you actually taste it, which brings up your next point. Exactly. You, know, you don't have to be this culinary expert to know when food tastes good, but you have to try it along the way. Absolutely. One of the best parts of cooking is actually tasting the food, seeing how you're doing. There's no mystery that we're doing here. I mean, you could <laughs> surprise your guest, you know, that you're cooking for, but you don't have to surprise yourself. So taste the food. See if it's too salty. There's not enough flavor. Maybe you put a little too much chicken stock. You'll find out all of these things by tasting the food, the flavors, the textures. You want to see how everything's going. Make sure that you do that so you can not be surprised when you sit down for your meal. And you may have a lot going on on the stove or the oven, so there's a lot to tend to, but your last tip is maybe don't over tend to things. Don't over stir. Don't over turn. Let it breathe. Let it sit for a little bit. I was talking about that before because a lot of times we have where we're trying to get food, you know, done for our families, our friends, for ourselves. And we're sitting there thinking like, if we go there and turn it, it'll be done a lot quicker. No. <laughs> if we turn the food too often, it'll lose the breading. You'll never get a good sear and it won't brown. So leave it, don't move it around and you'll be very happy with how it comes out afterwards. Well, you are making us very hungry this morning, <laughs> Victoria. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. I hope everyone has a great meal tonight. Yeah, me too. Uh, we're going to post the links to your social media pages, as well as these five tips again. Well, you can find Perfect. them all at roadshow.com.